How do you create within war zones opportunities for kids to grow and, and to thrive? We currently spend $249 roughly per person each year on war. And to give that some context, it is about 12 times what we spend on international humanitarian assistance, on making sure that the most vulnerable children throughout the world have the opportunity to go to school, to access food and water, uh, to have shelter, and to rebuild their lives. We have to be investing as much, if not more, on the peace side of that equation as we do on ongoing violence and instability. In the last few years, war has experienced a dramatic resurgence. We have the worst refugee and famine crisis since World War II. There are more than 60 million people right now who have been displaced from their homes in a tidal wave of war and violence and instability, and their needs are absolutely enormous. We're really about trying to change war at its foundation by investing in communities um, and community-based organizations who are on the front lines and who are trying to rebuild their societies and end that cycle once and for all. So my first experience in a war zone was in Somalia during the famine. And as a young doctor, I uh, arrived in Somalia believing that I would be saving lives and I was quickly confronted by the limitations of that kind of thinking. One of the reasons why we struggled to do what we needed to do in Somalia during the famine to keep people alive was because everywhere you turned, there were young men, uh, almost exclusively young men, who had never been to school, but who had fought and who had killed with primarily Kalashnikov rifles. And so the abundance of weapons and the lack of opportunity for young people and the intractable violence and poverty. I left Somalia um, asking myself, well, what can we do differently here? You know, how can we disrupt some of these drivers of war and conflict? How can we actually invest in those young people in different ways so that they have alternatives to more war and to more violence? There are a number of underreported wars throughout the world. I mean, the list is long. More than five million people have died in eastern Congo, which is considered to be the worst war in terms of the numbers of civilians killed in African history. But South Sudan is a conflict that has been raging now for 30 years, but has been very, very intense over the last couple of years. But Yemen is another one that unfortunately has been neglected now for many years. There are a lot of distractions right now. Every time you turn on the news, you're hearing about Trump and his Twitter feed and, and other kinds of things that are happening. And we don't have to be powerless here. You know, we can choose to invest in and spend our time and our money and our energy on these harder issues, issues that will actually keep people alive, that will demonstrate our empathy and our compassion and our global citizenship throughout the world, and not be distracted by the bullying, the aggression, the grandstanding that has, I think, come to define foreign policy right now in the world. It's something that goes on for many years and families become increasingly uh, desperate under those circumstances. So being invested for the long haul, that's one of the most important ways that we can actually support families and make sure that children, that an entire generation is not being lost to the effects of war. You travel throughout places like Mosul and you realize that everything has been destroyed. In pushing back ISIS, which did need to happen, uh, there's nothing left. And so com communities that used to live there are still living in refugee camps. Their kids have been out of school for years. They're having a hard time accessing things like food uh, and money that they need to be able to provide for themselves. When you think about what this entire generation is going to need next, they're going to need a major investment in reconciliation, in rebuilding those communities, in bringing them together 
And unfortunately, it's when the troops go home and the military offensive ends that our interest in this kind of thing wanes. And when our interest wanes and the media support wanes, unfortunately, so do our donations. It can sanction people to a lifetime of poverty and uh, ongoing hostility and isolation.